Welcome back to the D2 Nation podcast. I'm your co-host, Wayne Cavati, and joining me once again is Bethany Bowman. Uh, Bethany, welcome back. Hey, Wayne. Thanks for having me back. We're excited to get D2 Fall Sports finally kicked off. And joining us today on the show, we're so excited to have special guest, head football coach at West Florida, Pete Shinnick. Thanks so much, Coach, for being here with us. Oh, thanks for having me on. Looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to talk um, um, D2 football once again. And, you know, before we, we jumped on, we were talking about that practice is back, so we know, know you're busy. Um, you're prepping for opening day. And now that you're back in practices and meetings, A, how does it feel to be back? And B, what are you realizing you missed most about uh, being away from D2 football for so long? Yeah, you know, obviously the 20 season, the 2020 season was was taken from all of D2 coaches. Um, you know, some people played in the spring. We, we, we did some scrimmages in the spring. But, uh, you know, to just be back and be in your normal routine. OK, so I, I think all coaches are creatures of habit. I think all of us love the routine. Well, here it is, August. We're preparing for a game. We're putting in the time. We're spending time with our players. You know, last August, we didn't have that. Um, you, you know, you, you, you miss that. Uh, our players really didn't report until school started. Uh, and then we kind of eased into it. it. It almost felt like we were a basketball team, you, you know, because basketball didn't get started until mid, mid-October, that kind of thing. So to just be back in the routine, be with our guys on a day-to-day basis uh, and have the opportunity to interact with them and uh, influence them and impact them in a positive way. Yeah, I bet you it's, it's exciting. Coach, number one in the preseason Power 10, also number one in the American Football Coaches Association. Pull obviously a lot of outside expectations from everyone, but what are yours? Yeah, our, our expectations really have never changed. And, um, you know, we, we, we started the program. We played four seasons. Um, this is obviously where we wanted to be when we started the program. Uh, I think preseason rankings are fantastic for fans uh, and parents. Uh, they get really excited about that stuff. For us, we talk about the last ranking. And for us, we, we, we just focus on where are we at the end of the year? Because that's the only one that they're really giving out anything for. Uh, they're not giving anything out for a preseason ranking. Our expectations really fit in line with really two uh, aspects of our program that we talk about uh, a ton. Uh, we, we have a couple of sayings. Number one is it's how we play, not who we play. So when we started in 2016, we had 75 freshmen uh, on the team and we were like, hey, look, it's how we play, not who we play, because we're going to have to figure out how to do this and we're going to get our heads kicked in if we think about anything else. And we were very competitive and, and we played really good football. And so as we say that, we also back it up with uh, our program theme is the Greek word for excellence, arete, A-R-E-T-E. And it means excellence of any kind. And it means living up to one's fullest potential. So we say it's how we play, not who we play. We say live up to our fullest potential. We do that. Great things are going to take place on the football field. And really, in our four years of playing, two times in the national championship game last three years, it's really been our guys believing in that aspect of who we are, how we do things, and why we do it. Yeah, and, you know, you're talking about it. I started covering D2 in 2016, so I've gotten to watch you know, your whole, and it's just, it's a, it's amazing. And I remember talking to, you know, a bunch of the guys and yourself in, in, in 2017 on that run. And it, and it was just remarkable, but you, you touched on the players, you know, and one of those players coming back is, is Austin Reed. And I'm not sure if you saw, but earlier this summer, uh, I said that I thought Austin Reed was the front runner for the Harlan Hill award and your completely unbiased opinion. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, he, well, for, first off, he, he's he, he's the best quarterback in Division Two right now. Uh, now he's got to live up to that. Um, but I mean, coming off a four thousand yard season, coming off a forty touchdown pass uh, season, coming off breaking the national championship record for most yards and touchdowns in a game, um, he he is by far uh, you know the best quarterback in Division Two. Now he's got to live up to that. Here's the thing about Austin Reed: um, he understands that, and he's excited about that. Um, I've really been pleased with the growth uh, and the development that he uh, has had. We, we hired a new uh, offensive coordinator and uh, quarterback coach, Rudy Carlton, and Rudy has really taken, um, you know, Austin to a different level. 
and, and taking him to uh, a different place. Um, Austin Reed will prepare every day like it's a game. And we practiced this morning uh, and you'd have thought he was in game mode. That's why he's as good as he is. And that's why he can get done what he gets done. Uh, so um, he not only has the talent, you know, we've seen that. And obviously his stats back that up, but he has the work ethic uh, to build it. So, um, you know, I think all those things are great to, again, talk about preseason and all that. He's got to live up to it. But what I've seen so far, uh, I'm excited to watch him play. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, Coach, make your pitch why the Gulf South Conference is the best in the land. Now, I am an Emporia State grad in the MIAA and then went on to cover the MIAA for a few years. And so I think I've seen some pretty good football I told sure. Wayne I'd keep my bias to a minimum on this podcast, but, uh, you know, let's hear from you. Why the Gulf South? Well, no, and, and hey, God, God bless the MIAA, God bless the GLBC, God, God bless all of them, okay? But let, let's just look at the history of the last 10 years of Division II football, okay? So when you want to talk about a conference, all right? Now, if you want to talk about one program, you, you, you know, I, obviously I think there's some that we can we can point out. But when you want to talk about a conference, okay, and you say that Delta State's made it to the national championship game, North Alabama's made it to the national championship game, Valdosta State has made it to the national championship game, and the University of West Florida has made it to the national championship game. When you say from 2017, 18, and 19, two different GSC programs have been in the national championship team game, and they've won two of the three, Okay. So then you take West Georgia, North Greenville, Delta State, and West Alabama, okay? Four teams that I did not mention in the, they've been to the national championship. Those four teams have all made it deep and deep playoff runs. And so from top to bottom, I mean, my argument has been since, I mean, when, when, when we started football and we came to the University of West Florida, I was like, oh my goodness, we're joining a league that there, there, there aren't any holes in. We're joining a league where there's, there, 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 there's no gaps. So, you, you know, FIT dropped football um, this last year. They've, they made it to the playoffs also. And so when you look at the width, the depth, um, and again, name another conference that's had more than two teams from their conference make it to the national championship game, much less win it. We've had four. Yeah. It is. It's been a remarkable run, and it's hard to argue with that. And, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of those teams, and, and looking at the Gulf South, South preseason poll, West Georgia is there at number five, and West Georgia is always very good. But That's that brings crazy. Yeah, yeah. And that brings us to the number two team behind, behind West Florida, and that's Valdosta State. And, and that's a team um, that you've only beaten once, and, and it was a heck of a game that you beat them in in, in the playoffs. Um what makes them so special? And are they kind of the team to beat for you? Are they becoming your rival? Um, you know, you're still young. It's hard to say who your ultimate rival is, but is that what you say, see Valdosta State as? Well, first off, I mean, what makes them great um, is that year in and year out, they're, they're just very good. Okay. And so I believe they have four national championships uh, in their history. They've spaced them out over the years. Uh, you know, I think 80, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2000, you know, they, 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 they found a way. Um, and so that's extremely impressive, just what they've been able to do. So they've, they've, they've had multiple coaches come through there, but that program is always good. OK, now for me, a rivalry, you know, really, we, we probably got to win a couple more games for it to be a rivalry. OK, because <laughs> we're, we're one and four against those guys. Um, and you know, we won with six seconds to go. We score in the second round of the playoffs from the one yard line on fourth and one, 6.9 seconds to go. And, you know, that's our only victory against those guys. So, I mean, we have the utmost respect for who they are, what they've done. Um, I think it's going to be a heck of a football game. Uh, they have talent across the board. Uh, they have great coaching and they, you know, they play at a very high level. So, uh, we know, you know, we know it's the last game of the year uh, for us. We, we, we know that there's, uh, you know, hopefully we've put ourselves in a position where, uh, you know, conference opportunity, conference championship opportunities on the line at that point in time. Uh, but, you know, from the respect level uh, and what they have done year in and year out, you know, they, 
they win the nat they go undefeated in 2018 they win the national championship and really they're they're six they're six seconds away from uh you, you know continuing that streak i mean they were like 27 in a row when we beat them yeah uh, that's that's a tremendous accomplishment yeah yeah for sure um and and we definitely have that game that last game of the season circled as well as one of the more exciting ones um okay real quick before we let you go we we decided that at the end of each episode we're going to put our coaches and, and student athletes on the hot seat so here those were the easy questions here okay. here, here come the tough questions are you ready sure okay first one um a coach or perhaps coaches that you've modeled your philosophy and, and have emulated um, as you're, you know, gotten to this point in your career? Sure. Probably the two biggest impacts in my life. My, my dad uh, played in the NFL, played 13 years in the NFL and then coached for 16 years in the NFL. And so growing up around him really uh, gave me a great idea of what this profession could look like, uh, how you could impact and influence people in a positive way uh, and really how you could, uh, you know, uh, continue to enjoy the process while having fun and making the game uh, enjoyable for a lot of people. And then the second, I worked for him for three years. I worked for him for one year at the University of Arkansas and two years at Clemson University, uh, Ken Hatfield. And just his philosophy and his approach uh, and how he handled things and how he handled players uh, really probably impacted me, um, you, you know, a, as much as anybody else. Coach, what is the best sports movie ever made? Best sports movie ever made. I would say Brian's song, only because my dad's in it uh, as an assistant coach uh, with the Bears. That's the original one. You know, that's James Caan and Billy yeah. D. Williams, you know, so I, I, I would put that up there. That's awesome. I just learned something. I never knew. You. <laughs> that's awesome that your dad was in that movie. That is a great movie. Um, any pregame superstitions? None, really. Uh, and really try to, it, it, it's funny. It, it's, it's almost, I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. It's just kind of like, all right, I'm, 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 I'm really not thinking about much other than let's just get to the stadium and, uh, you know, make sure the team's all there and go from there. <laughs> yeah. What is your go-to binge watch show that you just can't get enough of? Oh, you know, um, you know, during COVID, obviously I, 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 I really didn't, do a whole lot of Netflix prior to COVID or anything like that. But, uh, you know, I think I've watched Longmire, uh, you know, I think there's six, seven seasons. I, th I think I've been through that thing twice now. Uh, it's just like, all right, Hey, we got done with it. Let, let, let's start over again. Let's let's see what's going on. You know, what, what, what's going on with Walt Longmire and uh, the people in Wyoming. So that one's been good to us. Great. Um, and then last, if there's one hobby you could take up in your downtime, which for a coach, there's not a lot of downtime, but what would outside of football, what would that be? Sure. You know, golf. I used to play a lot of golf. It, it, it's, it's amazing. I moved to Florida and I buy a house on a golf course and I've played less golf uh, than I ever played in my life. I, I don't know what that is. I, mean, I, I got the third fairway out right outside my backyard. It's like, <laughs> what am I doing? So uh, I need to get back to playing a little bit, but golf would be my, uh, my release. Uh, just nice. Uh, go out, relax, have fun. You know, I'm not sitting there, you know, uh, sweating over every shot or something like that just good to be out good to be moving around yeah i'm the same way when i golf it's all about making those three good shots and i go home happy <laughs> yeah there's so they're somewhere in that round you can find them you know? <laughs> exactly um well well coach uh thank you so much for being our first guest on the show and you know uh, I'm, I'm long the list long list of goals i'm sure you have for this season if you guys do make it back to the playoffs, another one of your goals could be the first repeat guest on the D2 Nation podcast. And hey, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, I'd love, I'd love to be that. Would be honored to, uh, to be back and talk about what we're doing. So thank you. No, thank you again for joining us. And, and we'll be back next week uh, with another very special guest. So be, be sure to uh, follow us, listen, like us, and subscribe. And thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next week.